Hello. There we go. Okay. So for some reason, my microphone got turned all the way down. I'm not even sure when that happened, but I'm going to keep adjusting my gain here. All right. That looks good. Hopefully, well, maybe maybe I need to turn it down just a little bit more. And I think that should just about do us. Um, thank you guys for being a little patient here as I'm getting set up and finding out that, uh, you know, all my things aren't working. Um, so let me get switched on. Right. Go ahead and back on. Which it looks like we've. Now, what I'm going to do real quick, while we're getting ready for this, is I'm going to start uh, working on the cockpit before I start tracking. Once I start tracking, I'm going to start regularly streaming at me. Start the end. Um, one of my little gripes. Is I love that expensive. Absolute recommend. All right, so battery one and two on ground. External power. Pulling this down a little bit on my end. Uh, <clears throat> Um, and so fuel pumps are all off. Fuel will be loaded by force loaded by on. Okay. Um, for our payload today, I just want to do some calculations. Seven thousand. That's going to be thousand five hundred. I'm going to go ahead and set this up to begin with, just in case. Agree. So. 6,000. That means 1,000. Not sure how. In on air seat. Cargo them. What is what is sim briefs? We have 12.5 cargo. Look, we have no passengers. So this is a fuel weight of 4.5. Let's set that 54. Point. That's what we're going to do. How we're going to do it, folks. Wavy, welcome to going up to um fire test. That's Pat. Wait a few seconds while I turn brightness. Roll wheel.
And... God. Drives me insane. I hate it. I hate it so much. Little knobs, fucking knobs. All right. And now one thing I'm gonna extra early is I'm gonna go ahead and as I can. Stop me. As my part. The flaps lever should. Rubber window heat. Auto. Unless we have a big old mound of dough on the front windshield. Which may be that on. Air conditioning. The white. Possibly. Air can wired. We have no passengers. I do not care about the cabin. Please don't worry about it. External power off. Electrical panel, all other lights off. Ventilation panel, all other lights off. Preliminary pre. Our are working on a road light to auto heaven logo system belts alright so this is where we get to start hearing on ears It is cracking this. So I am going to go ahead and see my check. Lights to auto. Wing lights on. Heaven logo I'm going to put on today. Belts. Uh, no smoke. Go oh, emergency exit light. Getting elevation. Auto pack flow as required. We've only got uh, pilot and co-pilot today. So at full pumps all on. Fire test engine. Fire test engine. Then goes. Now we get to uh, our mic. Go to our uh, GPS mod. Go to me. Hey, Jeff. Looked this up like four times in the last two. Those so, uh, Charlie Delta. Point number. Our current position is thirty-eight thirty-five point six. And then our longitude is ninety-two point zero. Line I press, Austin. Gonna be five, big surprise. Flight level. Nine zero. Basically flying point. Okay, there's there's a couple of waypoints on the, it's like when I say a couple, I mean a couple. Alright, so we are departing from KJF runway 12 with no sleep, because they don't have any sleep. at Delta. Zero nine. Like, neither one has... Are 
But I don't out for it. Might be. However, no worries. We're not going to worry about it. Right plan. All right. We need to go to a nip. Take off the flaps. Our oh, fuel weight is center of gravity of 30 points. Block fuel is. Tells me we'll have an extra 53 minutes of fuel. Performance, we're 133. Rotate, and 144. Flaps are going to crash. And our flex temps, 65 degrees. Four hundred thirty-two nautical miles. IRS will be aligned in net. Don't actually back today. Or else better. Just one. We're not going to worry about it. This button the free. Look up our Metar for KJF. In the altimeter 3010. Altimeter set. Flight directors both on. FCU dashed. Heading dashed in one minute when. Altitude, we said these weird, we're not. 
Don't worry about that today. We're gonna up to you. And it's getting nose wheel steering is on. Switching panel. I want to double check. Is it all normal? Accident. Changing that. For this and get far because. Be full. And on. Engine start procedure. Er, engine. I apologize if I'm not being as engaged as I would normally be. But, um, choose one is that startup and shutdown, uh, or pardon me, startup and landing are some of the most active I have as a pilot. As a sim pilot. Your flight will be monitored until you land and shut down the engines. Thank you, on air lady. Um, and two is that I something happy underneath. Me. Not sure exactly, but I do not feel comfortable. So I'm kind of avoiding extraneous talking. Which means it's really dumb for me to be doing, but it is what it is. All right, starting in one. Wait for 20% in one rotation. But as far as on air is concerned, it started taking me about 10 minutes to get up to. Uh, I'm out of practice. I've been, I've been flying too much in Microsoft. Waiting for 20 minutes and one rotate. That's a plus transfer. Twenty percent ignition back to normal. APU off. Ground spoilers armed. Flaps set for takeoff. Button down. Down point. Master all. We're ready for taxi. Light set taxi. We're going to real quick test our light controls. Left, right, up, down. Left rudder, right rudder. Neutral, right. We're good going to uh, release the parking brake. Set max. Apps top run. Now you should be on nav and Very little of what that video tells you will actually save your lives. I'm going to do it instead. Here's the thing to remember if we crash or make an emergency landing, statistically speaking, 95% of people will survive. If it's a serious crash, 55% of people will survive. So if this plane is going down, constantly. 
because your life may depend on some smart decisions. Keep in mind that 80% of accidents happen within the first three minutes and the last eight minutes of flight. So that's when it would be wise to keep your shoes on and put your laptops away to stay focused. The safest seats on this plane are over the wings closest to the emergency exit. If you're not in one of those right now, here's what you can do to help ensure your survival. Look where your nearest exit is. Now count the rows between you and that exit. If the cabin was full of smoke, or upside down, or full of smoke and upside down, how would you get to that exit? Take a moment to visualize yourself doing that right now. Now look at your seatbelt. I know all of you know how to use it, but that's because nothing is making you lose your shit right now. It's common for people in your stress situations to try and open that thing by pressing a button that's not actually there, like a seatbelt in your car. So take a moment to imagine yourself lifting that flap in an emergency. In fact, do it right now, just to get used to the motion. Emergency evacuations on the runway are more common than crashes. In the event of something like an engine fire, we need to get you all off the plane in about 90 seconds. This means you need to leave your fucking bags in the overhead bins and get off the damn plane in a quick and orderly manner. Those bags will bring the evacuation to a virtual home. My first officer and I will be trying to get off this plane, and the last thing we want is the cockpit blocked by your roll on. Now, you're probably well aware there's a life jacket under your seat, but forget about it. They're less likely to save your life than those little airline planes. Sure, there was a famous 2009 emergency water landing on the Hudson, but there were boats on hold in the community and nobody actually knew that the life was. There was a flight that ditched the Caribbean in the 1970s where 40 lives were likely saved by the But there was also one off the coast of the Soviet in 1996 in which many passengers Put it another way, if you replace the white bag, you can the shop, you can put the to buy the bag. Let's take a second to talk about those options. You can use cabin pressure to fairly low altitude. Airborne time lock. Well, 20% of the 
but because more people may write in terms of the one, a journal professor estimated that an extra 1,595 people died in car accidents in the year after 9 11. Just the US. Control reminds me that we'll probably be seatbelt signed on nearly the entire flight. But our flight is definitely brought into the valley, and we definitely don't like to find a seat in the body of the night. Bad or anything. Anyway, you can see that in the past, you felt it took forever to serve your drink, but the bear would get into the unit, and then leave the tray at the table, and it was really impossible to get out of the chair and leave the chair. Looking forward to the light, the salt disguise would be in the unit. Hey, Ken, our own, our very own, very special. <clears throat> Although, now it seems like my mic really is good luck. Uh, please wait. Okay. that will help. Maybe that will help. It is. Definitely. What is going on with my microphone here? It is just giving me all kinds of problems today. It does not want to keep my noise gate open like it's supposed to. Somehow it got turned, the game got turned way, way down. Not sure exactly when or how, but it did. And now, um, it's behaving a little funky. I think it's starting to work like it's supposed to at that. So I'm, I'm kind of happy with here. So, what are we doing today, folks? We are uh, flying cargo in on air again, but today we're doing it in X Plane, as opposed to the rest of the time that we've done this, we've been doing it in Microsoft Flight. This is the easiest thing to set up, guys. And here's the thing you don't even need a sim to do it. Uh, you would need one to fly for a virtual airline like I do in, in the Thunder server, but. You can play in Cumulus with just AI, um, where basically it becomes an airline tycoon type game, where you purchase uh, aircraft or you rent aircraft and you hire pilots to fly them, and you're just building the reputation of your airline. That's it. That's it. You're just building your airline. And really, that's what we're doing here. Um, only here we're doing it for Buona instead of for myself. Um, and I am one of the pilots that he has hired. Actually, I'm the dispatch manager, which is a little more responsibility than, than I was hoping to get out of the game. But apparently I'm good at it, so uh, I just do what I can when I can, when I can to help out. Uh, it's nothing that big. But yeah, we're, we're flying in on air today. Um... We need to push the standard barrel because we're through 18,000 feet. I need to I need to pay more attention because there are things that it dings me for in on air that I, it didn't in uh, that, that normally I don't have to worry about. Like uh, if I forget to turn off my landing lights until you know 15,000 feet, no big deal. But with on air, if I still have them on when I cross 12,000 feet, I get a safety. If I have them off when I cross 10,000 feet downwards, then I uh, get another safety game. It's not a big deal, the individual penalty, but what is a big deal is I lose the 10% reputation bonus. And I would really like to keep the reputation bonus. Uh, one of the things that I am trying to be really good about is my reputation. Uh, there's a lot of things that this is on air is just so fucking cool guys if you have never tried it out check it out go to on air company I don't know if I did I make a 
I did. Wait. No. That's just an automatic. <laughs> no. Uh, so you can go to On Air Company. They've got a seven-day trial, and beyond that, it's really, really cheap, guys. I think I paid like ten bucks, twelve bucks for three months. Let me throw that in the chat. I'm not sponsored by them. I wish I was, honestly. Um, even if it wasn't, like, they give me a subscription for free, but, like, I would much rather... Let me be clear. I would rather than... I, I, if I had my choice between having a subscription for myself paid for for as long as I continue to play and to support on air, or having a copy to give away to you guys, I would absolutely want one to give away to you. And I have no idea why my heading is not working. Neither is my aircraft. Um, new toolkit. What are you doing? Um, hmm. Hmm. I have no idea why that's not working. It should be. It really should be. I'll have to look into Sim Toolkit settings, see what they've done to screw that up. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and switch this to status. If I can monitor that. <clears throat> so, how have you guys been doing? Um, I haven't gotten a chance to catch up with a lot of you in a while. Uh, by a while, I mean since Friday. Um, I have been struggling to get hours into on air because at this point in my career on on air, I'm flying the big birds. Problem is, is that big birds can be extremely profitable in very niche situation, right? So you have to be very careful about how you monetize them. You have to be careful about how you fly them. You can't just grab any old job and run with it because it's probably going to wind up costing you more than you make by running, right? Because right now I'm paying, I, I want to say like $70,000 per hour. So if I'm flying for two hours, $140,000 just to take off and land. That doesn't count my landing fees, it doesn't count my fuel, it doesn't count um, any damage that gets done, uh, repair costs, or uh, maintenance costs. Which, all of which are actually in on air. One of the things that I think is really cool about it. Um, and really, <laughs> I need to stop being so, uh, I, I need to stop being so, what do you, what do you call it, uh, complimenting them so, so much, because um, they're not paying me, <laughs> they're not giving me anything to give away to you guys, uh, I just love the service, that's it, it's just fun, um, especially when you partner with Microsoft Flight, which you can get for a dollar right now by signing up for the beta of, uh, Xbox Game Pass PC. I mean, you get a game for a dollar, and then you can try a seven-day trial of On Air, and it gives you reason to fly into all these little weird airports. They even have a, a competition going on right now where they want you to, to, to document and take screenshots of the weirdest and most out of the way little airports that On Air has sent you to. And if yours gets picked each month, you get a three month free subscription. So, <laughs> all you gotta do is just fly with it. And if within every three months you find a weird rinky dink backwater airport, it's just weird and, and you know, it seems funky and nobody's really seen before. You get, you can basically have your subscription for free. If if yours is good enough and you're in in your your 
screenshots of it are good enough. And the sim is beautiful. So, yeah, like, it's such a cool little program. I love it. Yeah, Karen's Hair Care Tire and the Tire Center and Coffee Shop. Yeah. Um, I literally landed in places where I thought I was just landing in somebody's backyard. There, there have been times where I gave up on finding the airport and I just set the plane down in a field and it said I was at the airport. Because <laughs> there are grass strips in, in, um, in Microsoft Flight and in On Air. There are just grass strip airports where it's just grass or it's just dirt or sand or whatever. And you just, you just land in it. Just put the damn plane down, and if you're in the middle of somebody's field, you apologize real, real nice to old Jim Bob and make sure that he knows you didn't mean no harm. That's it. That's that's the whole thing. That's the whole job. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of how it works, and I think that it's really fun. To, to, to visit some of those places. I just, I re one thing I do recommend is at least until you are really good at night flying, is to make sure that you either fly during the day in your local area or you go to your settings page before you fly and make sure that you offset UTC by a number of hours to make sure that your whole flight will be in the daytime because it is really hard to land at an unlit grass strip in the middle of the night. Which is why they're closed. You're not supposed to. Uh, mm. but yeah, I've landed at a place where it's literally, it's, it's not even Karen's Hair Care Tire Center and Coffee Shop. It's not even a coffee shop. It's just a dude's backyard. It's just, it's just, you know, James O'Keefe's fucking backyard barbecue, and you're just landing, and doing your best. And that's just it. Um, <clears throat> I've landed on roads before. Uh, because I couldn't find a, a, a runway. I just set her down on the road. Close enough. That's what I'm doing. So far, I haven't really gotten too bad of, of, a, of, of dings in on air for, you know, not being where I'm supposed to be or not being far enough, that sort of thing. But all in all, it's been fun. That's the thing. That's, that's something that a lot of games have forgotten how to do lately. And this is such a simple idea. I mean, it's difficult to execute, which you can definitely tell because On Air has some rough patches. There's some things that we need to fix, especially for V. You know, like I ha I'm working with a with a larger VA. We've got maybe 40-ish members, but <clears throat> in order to manage our assets, we assign individual airplanes to individual pilots so that, you know, everybody doesn't see 30 airplanes when they log in. Problem is, is that we don't have a scroll bar for our, uh, our members. And we don't have a scroll bar for our airplanes either. So um, we can do some fancy filtering and, and uh, reordering by different columns to try and find people. But end of the day we can't pan the the list up and down we have to sort it in such a way that the people we're looking for are near the top uh it also as as of yet has no night mode which um it's 2020 guys night mode should be the default everything should be developed in night mode that's hot takes i know nobody wants to hear it uh People like options, so go ahead and keep a day mode, but night mode should be default now. We've we've done the research, we've we've seen the, the statistics have come in, everybody likes night mode. Because um, 
done are the days of melting our eyeballs for eight hours. We're not doing that anymore. Um, oh, we're getting a little shimmy. We've got a hell of a crosswind. Holy shit. 65 knot side, straight from the side. Let's take a look at this crab angle. I think I turned down the exterior. <laughs> Listen to this. And these sounds are good. There's that buzzsaw sound. We got, we got no pilots. That's one thing Microsoft does have over Xbox. The visuals are amazing. But Solus ain't done half bad with this. I mean, just look at how beautiful this thing is. Now, I wish I had the Buena Air livery, but we don't have a Buena Air livery for this one. So I'm going with the Air Rack Attack livery for now, because um, I might actually add to this somewhere that operating on behalf of uh, one air but yeah this is absolutely gorgeous uh, I think these clouds are a little different since they moved to Vulcan it's still not nearly as good as MFS I think they do look better. I do think they look better. Now, the only problem is getting them to work in MFS. Um, they tend to work like one time, and that's it. You gotta reboot the sim and hope that they work a second time. Uh, live weather is, is very badly bugged. Very, very bad. And even when it does work, it, from what I understand, it's like 15 minutes delayed, 20 minutes delayed. Which doesn't sound that bad, except for the fact that Metars change every 15 minutes. Um, so, you know, your, your live weather may be giving you a tailwind when uh, the, the ATC has given you a landing on a place that you're, you're supposed to be landing into a headwind, but it's because that wind is going to shift here in the next 15, 20 minutes, but that doesn't matter because you're still catching a 20 knot gust from the tail and that's gonna slam you down on the pavement. You're, you're gonna crash. Why we don't land with more than, I think it's like three to 10 knots tailwind. I'm hoping that today we're going to be able to make all these trips. Uh, we've got a couple of really short hops coming up. Um, so if I can throw up I wonder if it'll show me the whole Yeah, it's showing me the whole thing. Stop it. I think, no, that's only showing going to KCSB and then right in this area. They're, they're very small, like, very small distances for the remaining. Oh, you can actually see my curve. You can't see it. Okay. 
but I think it's it's over in this area compared to you know the flight that we're doing from all the way up here and we're almost halfway through turn that back off for you um, so we can maybe enjoy some of these views These are absolutely gorgeous. I mean, look at these clouds. I wish I had ortho. Um, I just, I honestly don't see the point anymore. Um, if I want something that's going to look pretty, I'm going to play an MFS, right? It'd be great for this to look pretty, but here's the thing. At this point, it's never going to match MFS. And what's important to me is systems. So when I look at this versus MSF, MFS, I prefer this. I prefer X-Plane because I am a systems buff. I don't care so much about how it looks. Especially not at 39,000 feet. I mean, at 39,000 feet, what am I seeing? I'm seeing mostly clouds 99% of the time. But getting that weather right, too, that's another big thing. Well, Microsoft can't do that right now. They're planning on fixing it, but they haven't done anything with it yet. <clears throat> so, right now, X-Plane's in the lead for me. But it's not going to stay that way. I already know it's not going to stay that way. Because of the way Austin is. Right? Austin's the guy that develops for X-Plane. Uh, and he's stubborn. And he only cares about how he wants it done. Uh, so what's the point of fighting? You know, he's already pissed off PMDG. They won't develop for X Plane. They haven't been for years. Um, they would rather stick with the 16-year-old FSX. And now MFS has come out. And what are you going to do now, Austin? Like, that's what I want to know, because here's the thing. I'm not saying that because I hate X-Plane. I'm saying that because I love X-Plane, right? I want X-Plane to continue. I want X-Plane to succeed. But the way that it's going right now, it's not going to. Um, the way things are going, they can't... Uh, I can't say it's going to be around for long. Oh, by the way, uh, I did want to point out, we do have some um, use for channel points. If you have some decent uh, channel points, there's some things that you can demand through the channel points menu down at the bottom, just underneath the uh, send a message bar. Uh, you can have me go get water, stretch. Uh, that's a different thing. That's not the that that's the bot points, um, which don't really have much in the way of uses other than using audio alerts. But there's the little pom-pom logo down below the chat bar. If you click on that, there's some things that you can uh, move towards. One of which is uh, to fly an entire flight end-to-end, -end, keyboard and mouse only, no HOTUS. But that's going to take a lot of doing. That's going to take people working together. Because I really don't want to do that. I really don't want to. I don't like it. I don't want it. But it might be fun. You know, um, hydrate. Okay. Well, in that case, I will be back in like one minute. I'm just going to go and grab some water. And uh, I'm going to I'm gonna drain that bottle of water. Um, yeah. I will be right back. Thank you very much. And I will see you in just like one or two minutes.
Okay, and I'm back, and I have water. This is, this is the squeaks. The squeaks of water hydration. Oh boy, and that's some cold water, too. Ah. Oh. Yeah, I actually needed that. Alright. So, we're back. We are, what? 120, 110 miles from our top of the set. <laughs> you know that water bottle. That water bottle has a slight modification now. So, the, um, the keyboard that I had to go... Okay, story time with a rack attack. So, um, I was having some issues last week with my keyboard. It just kind of... It went tits up. It, it, it went kaput. So, I had to some last minute shopping try to find a keyboard that would function again. Um, I don't even remember what was wrong with my keyboard, but I remember that it was not working properly. Um, oh right, my, my space bar. My space bar was sticking down, it, uh, or pardon me, it was sticking up. Um, I could push it down, but I had to hit it with enough force that it was hurting my, my, my thumb. My thumb was actually getting a uh, sore on the side of it from how hard I had to push it down uh, in order to get it to depress and, and uh, register the press. So I had to go out in the middle of the night, pick up a, a keyboard that Wifey suggested. Wifey found this, this keyboard. And um, so far I love it. Um, it's got some really cool uh, lighting options. Six different lighting zones. It can do ripple effects, it can do breathing, it can do um, different colors, everything. It's really fucking cool. I, I, I really like this keyboard. It's a, uh, what's it called, a, a Red Dragon Shiva? Yeah, Red Dragon Shiva. And um, one of the things it came with was a little Red Dragon sticker. And I couldn't think of anywhere to put it. Because, I, you know, like, I'll put temporary things, like magnets on I have issues with actual details. But then I found out that this one is... It, it, it's, it's a clear poly, poly, polyvinyl sticker that's just got the red dragon is just in red. So it's just going to tint anything that's underneath it, right? So I put it on my water bottle, so now it looks almost like this dragon is painted onto my water bottle. Which I think looks really cool. Um, it's dumb, but you know what? I, I, I'm a child sometimes. Look, there's a child inside all of us, and you have to let him out to play. Right? Why not have it be a little dragon on my, my water bottle, right? That's not going to hurt you. We can't always hide our inner child, right? You gotta have fun. You gotta enjoy what you're doing. You gotta enjoy your life. What's the point of living if you're not gonna enjoy it? trying to fix that little stabbing I keep feeling in my throat. It makes it really hard to keep talking to you guys, and that sucks because I really want to talk to you. Um, I enjoy my community interaction, even if my community right now is really small. Um, you know, like three or four people, most of which don't even get the chance to actually watch. Um, <clears throat> speaking of which, if you don't have the time to watch me right now, that's absolutely fine um, because anymore I am downloading all of my streams immediately after the stream ends and I'm uploading them all to YouTube after I'm done so if you miss me today right I will be here on YouTube search for Iraq ATK uh, I have to say that because I don't have subscribers and the view hours and all that yet to be 
able to get my own URL. So I can't be, you know, youtube.com slash Iraq attack yet. But that is the plan, that is the goal. Um, I hope we get there relatively soon. Because um, it's really frustrating to have a you know mile long URL. What are Add I did not. I need to add a command for that. Um, I think I need post it. <laughs> At least not ones that I can easily get to. There's one top one. That jazz. So. This one. That's my YouTube channel. Isn't it memorable? Listen, guys, here's the thing. This is the frustration that I have with virtually every single platform. You so whether it's YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, Twitch, even Mixer probably, but, you know, Mixer's basically gone now. I don't know whether they've finished going away yet, but uh, they're either on the way out or they're already dead. Everywhere you go, there are tools to help a stream, to help a community, to help a creator grow. However, almost universally, <clears throat> amongst all places that I have seen, 100% of the time, not available to people who are uh, too small. And here's the thing. That is stupid. That is, that is very, very stupid. Because um, we're the ones who need it the most. We have to we have to start somewhere and right now it is almost impossible for us to really get started um, and we don't face a lot of the same challenges people say oh well you know we didn't have those challenges when we were just starting to use no you didn't but you know what you also didn't have was 350,000 people competing for the same slot right so the number of viewers on YouTube, yes, it has continued to grow, but not at the same rate as the number of creators, right? Because as technology develops, it makes it easier and easier to create content. You will see more and more creators, especially at a time like now where a lot of people are out of work and they're looking for things to do. So what do they do? create content on YouTube. They've got nothing better to do. Right? And that's something that I'm doing just like everyone else. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. What I'm saying is that the technology that helps creators to create and to garner an audience is also advancing but we're not getting equal access to it. I mean... Twitch, for instance, right now, right now, on the main page, there is a carousel of videos up at the top. And um, those creators are selected. A lot of them are, are selected automatically from the largest channels, but some of them are also selected for programs like the, uh, what's it called, the Creator Growth Program. Which is a really cool idea, but they're using it in way too small of a scope. You know, you're, you're looking at, because you don't even have access to it at all if you're not a partner. You have to be a partner in order to be a part of the Creator Growth Program. Um, and then they'll put you on the main page on that carousel uh, for an hour, for a day, somewhere during the week. Um, sometimes it'll be once a week, sometimes twice a week they'll schedule, right? But you get scheduled for this time where you're an hour on that banner 
and you'll see viewership jump from 100 people watching to 6,000 people watching. And that's fantastic. I think that's a fantastic thing, and it helps smaller creators grow. But are they really smaller creators? I mean, that's the question that I'm asking. Because I'm a smaller creator. I'm, I'm the smallest of creators. Um, and I've been working with this, trying to, to perfect my craft and to keep improving my stream and learn how to do more and more things and try to engage people and ideas, and I'm doing the best that I can. The problem is I have zero support. Right? What might wind up with a with a person grabbing you know an extra 10% viewers could literally landmark my channel you know these these partners that are already partnered going into the creator growth program they may see 5 10 15% viewership increase uh, retention not, not just eyes on the channel, because obviously I just talked about how I was in a stream. I was there when it went from 150 viewers to 6,000, right? Or I think 7,000 was the top. So obviously it's having an enormous effect of just putting eyes on the channel, but that doesn't matter. What matters is how many come back. <coughs> so this program can put thousands of eyes on a channel, right? And I understand that you can't pick everyone. We can't all get that chance. But if you open up even one of those slots, just pick a random smaller creator that's only got, you know, five or ten viewers tops. You pick one that's that, that the streamer has been streaming reliably for at least a year. That you know you're not catching those people that are just streaming for the first time to their friend. Right? Maybe make it something you have to sign up for, or you have to at least be an affiliate. Because it's a... Because let me be clear. Getting affiliate is easy. Okay? I didn't think that at first, but being where I am now... Getting affiliate is easy as long as you get out of your own way. As long as you don't... See, this was the problem that I had. This is why it took me so long to get affiliate. It took me forever to get affiliate because of two things. One, I defeated myself from the get-go because I did not define myself as a channel. I did not have an identity. I did not have a schedule. I had nothing. It was just, if I happen to show up tonight, I'm a stream, and you can show up or you can not. And people can't plan around that. So it just, it killed the interest of the channel. Um, few people would come back, mostly. It was just my friends that were watching. Um, but the other way that I shot myself in the foot is that I considered it to be cheating to ask other streamers for help. And I don't just mean with my channel itself, but with followers and viewers. It's not a bad thing to ask a friend that streams that's bigger than you for a raid. And it is not unfair or, or cheating to raid someone else with the intention of sharing an audience with them. Because when you raid somebody else, then sometimes they'll raid you back. Even if they don't, sometimes people in their chat will be appreciative of you supporting their favorite streamer, and they'll throw you a follow to see if they like your stuff too. Um, and at the same time, it's it, and it's not just manipulative, it's not just taking advantage, because you're also sharing your audience with them. I know that um, there are people in my community that are still fans of JK Reno, because one night, we were playing something, I can't even remember what it was, and I raided him because he was playing it. Actually, I think, was it, was that when we were playing Secret of Mana? I think it was Secret of Mana. And he was playing it, and I raided him, and he's got a really cool stream. And he was smaller at the time, you know, kind of within my, my ballpark. Um, but 
now he's much, much bigger. Um, but you see what I mean? It, it, it's not cheating to ask for help. It's not manipulative to raid people and hope that you get something out of it. That's the primary method of growth for most small streamers trying to get to affiliate. Um, and it's, it, it, it's, it's an example of, of community, of, of, of cohesiveness, something that we nerds, we gamers, we stick together and we help each other. That's something that you don't see a lot in the world outside of us, right? You see people get competitive. And you would think gamers should be the same because we're playing competitive games. What the hell is that? Did I blow through top of the scent? I absolutely blew through top of the scent. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and descend to 3,000 feet. We need to enter our destination data, which I'm going to grab from the Tolis plugin. Okay, Q and H is going to be B015. Temp is going to be 20. Winds are 090 at four knots. And we're going to decision height 200. <clears throat> Specialization wind. Wait to grab the wind request. Right. Oh, great, we're on our descent. Um, we are way above our glide slope, so. Go ahead and throw in some speed brake. We can kind of catch up to that uh, descent profile in another couple hundred feet per minute. I'm sitting here talking about the creator growth program and everything just blowing through my descent profile. Let's look at our set procedures. Okay, landing elevation is auto. Uh, make two arrivals is done. Performance approach is done. Top of descent winds we can't do. Uh, I could look up the uh, winds at levels, but it's a little late for that. Um, FCU altitude has been pushed. Speed brake half is currently in. Altimeter at flight level 180 or below. Got a little ways to go to get there. <clears throat> Indy data is on constraints. I'm also going to throw airports on the uh, co-pilot. LS as required. We're nowhere near that. And this place doesn't have an ILS, so no worries there. And there won't be anything to throw on the rad nav either for the same reason. So we are good down to 18,000. Looks like this is where we're estimated to re-intercept our descent profile, I think. If I'm remembering what that means. Yeah, that's what it looks like. It's starting to come in. And we're basically caught back up. There we go. And that's how you handle it if you've blown through a uh, descent profile. Now, if you are too low to do that, or if you've lost an engine, there are other methods that you could use. You could maybe uh, do, a, do a 360 turn, uh, fly a hold pattern. Um... 
you could maybe just dive and and accept that that means that you're going to get higher uh, airspeed, which is not a bad thing if you've lost an engine. Um, what is dangerous? So <clears throat> low approaches and slow approaches are not bad. What's bad are low energy approaches. So if you have no engine then low and slow is bad. Low and fast? That's not too bad. You've still got options there. You can pull back up. Um, if you're slow, you can be low and have engines, or you can have no engines and be high, and you can still trade altitude for speed. Right? Um... If you're low and slow, you can trade gas for speed. You can never trade anything back for gas. We've tried. We've tried that a lot. Um, except possibly for beans. Beans are very good at being traded for gas. Uh, but the point is that... Um, there, there may be times where you can't just throw in that, that speed brake. Oh, what is... No, 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 stop, stop, stop. Oh, come on. X-Plane. Nice X-Plane, my radios are off. This is a navigation radio. Turn that off, too, just to make sure. Okay. Turn this on just to check and see. Oh, my God, no. It's that one. It's absolutely that one. Nope. Nope. Okay, it's on 122.2. I'm just going to switch this. There we go. Now you can shut the fuck up! Hi. There we go. Alright. Now, I'm going to turn that off. Maybe this can go back to 122.2? Actually, I'm not going to mess with that. It's quiet now. Quiet and I'm happy. I don't want to keep hearing Adis from Birmingham. What's going to be interesting is the remaining flights, because these are all super, super short. Almost a buzz. How is it? Okay, so is that a 45 degree entry? No, what? How does that work? Why is that left traffic? We're on this side of the airport, it should be right traffic. That means I'm going to have to make... ...135 degree entry to the traffic pattern? Or fly through the traffic pattern and enter it from the other side? That's stupid. Is this real? Is this, is this a real um, procedure? This does not feel like a real procedure. Then again, I seriously doubt that a 319 should be coming into this airport at all. <laughs> Let me take a look at on air. Yeah, 5,390 foot runway. <laughs> One of the things where I gotta turn left at Albuquerque, no. Um, it's not that we're lost. <sighs> so, what it's showing is there's a hold here. So, 
normally you would enter the traffic pattern and then do a loop and then come down onto the runway. Now, normally that traffic pattern goes over the, the, the runway. Uh, it goes over the airport. So it should be up here, not back here. It's not like we've lost, we're lost, wifey. It's just we're lost. No, we're not lost. It's just, it's, it's, it's misplaced and it's going the wrong direction. Um, so to enter onto a runway at the heading that we're going to, and there's only one runway here, so 0927. And we're landing 27. So normally you would have two traffic patterns depending on which way it's currently landing. Right? You'd have one for 09 and one for 27. Usually you go left traffic. So what that means is one of these two sides of this runway, of this loop here that you see here, is going to be lined up with the runway, and that's going to be where it's landing. Um, <clears throat> so in this case, it's the far side from where we are. So normally, if we were going to enter this traffic pattern, one, it would be up here over the runway and two, we would want to be coming from this direction and enter from 45 degrees. That means from here we would angle off this way, then come in at 45 degree angle to the, uh, what's that called, the crosswind? And then turn around and come back up. No, uh, that's the downwind. I'm not sure. I don't. I, I don't remember traffic patterns because I never really learned GA. Um, but essentially, it's setting this up so that, like, if they just moved this over the airport, we would be entering 45 degrees for runway. What is that? Zero zero. Zero nine. Um, but we're entering it for runway two seven. Cammy, where have you been? Where have you been? Cammy, come on. You have left me alone. I have not seen you. I have not heard about your corgi in forever. You don't even know about the YouTube channel. I have a YouTube channel where I upload all this stuff now. So even if you miss the stream, you can still, you can still see the YouTube channel. <laughs> oh, don't you worry about it. It's fine. Right, we are 3010. Alright, so I gotta watch our altitude because somewhere between 10,000 and 12,000 I need to turn back on the YouTube. Yeah, we have a, we have a YouTube channel. Oh, I know. And I've got like five videos out right now. Um, and I'll have another one releasing, um, what time zone are you in? Because I release at midnight between Thursday and Friday central time. So you, uh, hold up. So you're teaching day classes and taking night classes? And then you're also still doing events in Midgard, I want to say? So we're in primal. I'm pretty sure it's in primal. Which, if anybody is at a complete loss, we're talking about Final Fantasy XIV. Um, we all play. Uh, wifey plays. I play. Cammy plays. And uh, Cammy, Cammy is an event coordinator. Is extraordinary. Okay, so you're in central. So it'll be midnight between Thursday and Friday. The so Thursday night midnight. First thing you wake up on Friday, you'll have a video. Um, oh, you're doing your master's. That's wonderful. That, I'm so happy for you. 
Well, uh, I mean, I'm also happy that you're losing your mind. Either. God. I am losing. That's right, because we were on the same data center until Christmas. That's right. That makes sense. Not something I'm good at, I might mention. I'm also going to real quick pop in here, and I'm going to remove the hole. Not allowed. Huh. How do you feel about this one? Bonk. Oh, this isn't good. Definitely changed something, but it's still doing the hold. There we go. Okay. There I pulled out that. Tuesday and Wednesday are classes. Oh, man. I'm excited. Uh-oh. Oh, well, that's not good. It's his job for his face to be on the ground. It's the norm now. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't dream of taking those away from you. Matter of fact, I have new batteries. I can do this. <laughs> And it sounds even better than the command. I got brand new batteries. Ooh, I need to turn on my lights. <laughs> now I I also I need to hear about the corgi. <laughs> I'll do you one better. <laughs> ah me. <laughs> You're on. You, remember two minute cooldown. Yeah, that's the timer. But I mean that doesn't mean I can't. Kick him into ball. I can still do it. Okay, I'm hoping we're going to get down before Goki. Okay. What's okay? What is okay? Talk to me, Goose. Where he's fine. Were you still cancer-free? Yes, but angry. I mean, she's a corgi. So, and it kind of goes a little bit with the, with the, uh... Oh, boy. Okay, we're closer than I thought. Um, speed dash, speed break as required, which I'm doing. Box 1 at 230 knots. Oh, lady corgi. Okay, approach mode is going to be useless. There's no glide slope or localizer to capture. Altitude for go around, which can't do. Boy, we are really close. I do not like how close we are. Hmm. We're just hitting the brakes here. Don't, don't, don't you worry, none. We're just hitting the brakes. Listen, old dogs need love too. I love an old corgi. Don't you, don't you act like I don't. Looking for the runway. Got this Colgate haze going on. Go ahead and set our auto brake. Actually, I'm not, it won't let me set it max. Mine. We're going to hit our D cell. 
So it takes down to 230. I have never seen these blocks before. I think maybe they're an estimated glide slope. Oof. Birthdays in two months. Mine is in four days. That speed down. Okay, so once I see the runway. There it is, okay. Two thousand five hundred. What? What about a present? Hold on, what? Did server transfer went from MIDI to Adam and Toys because of some FC? I've had a lot of FC drama as well. I have joined and left a new FC since the last time we were in this channel. Um, left because uh, the um, FC master-ish was making everything political and was not listening to anybody about anything. Okay, the sign's on. Haven't checked. Oop, over speed. I'm gonna go ahead and drop gear. Terrain, terrain. Pull, terrain, terrain. Gear down. Terrain. Oh, I really hope I can make this. Really high. Terrain, terrain. Four hundred. Three hundred. Hundred above. Too low. Flaps. Too low. Flaps. Minimum. One hundred. Sink rate. Fifty. Forty. 30, 20, retard, 10, 5. Landing time block. Landed at Kilo Sierra Charlie Delta. Merkel Silicon. Okay, gotta stop, gotta stop. Woo hoo hoo hoo! Okay. Well. That was, that was fun. Oh dear. <laughs> An A319 should not be in this place. This is, this is way, way, too, why are there trees? Why are there trees? <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> What's going on? Okay. Um. Oh no, this is. Well, yeah, this might be Karen's hair care. <laughs> Why are there parking spots for cars? I don't know. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this is the thing about on air. They have. I have. There needs to be a lot more classifications, honestly, of. of of runways and everything like this the size of the airports don't seem to in any way correlate with what the actual like classifications of the airports would be um okay let me <laughs> retract flaps disarm the speed brakes it will listen lights off Oh, no, he can, needs to stay on. Alright, and then start up the APU. Lighting lights. Lighting lights are retracted, ground spoilers are disarmed, engine mode is normal, flaps are retracted, APU master is on, APU start should be ready, there we go, perfect. Rain on ND is off, brake fans are on, uh, and parking, park pressure, uh, park brake on, anti-ice off, APU bleed on as soon as it becomes available, engine 1 and 2 master off as soon as the APU is available, runway turnips are off. What the heck is the Silakuga Municipal Airport? I think that's where we're at. I think that's exactly where we're at. Um, like, uh, yep, that's where we're at. Silakuga Municipal. Um, really hope we can take off from here. <laughs> We get to plan another one. Um, we, oh, wait. I still have to... AP bleed on, and then shut down engine 1 and 2. Engine off time logged. End of flight. Registered in on-air company. Okay, we did not get our uh, safety bonus. Because it dinged us for having more than 250 knots under flight level 1,000, uh, flight level 100, which, uh, we didn't. We were at 250 knots. Um, and then our landing lights being on above 120,000 feet, or 12,000 feet. Um, so I only got the 5% for comfort and 5% for aircraft handling. Looks like we only had a base 0.07% damage to the aircraft for just normal operation wear and tear. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. So now I have to look at where do I go next. This was... Let's, it's still unloading cargo, so I'm going to throw this up on the screen so y'all can see. And then I'm going to open up my stream so I can see what y'all are saying. Um, are there murder hobos? Probably. Um, we're in the middle of fucking nowhere. I mean, let's let's just be honest. You're asking me, are there murder ho hobos? And I'm telling you, there are literally trees growing on the taxiway. Like, if there's not murder hobos, what are even are the murder hobos doing? Lives. Um... So they're they're definitely hiding in the trees. That's why we're not fully uh, unboarding. We're not we're not opening the the, the cockpit. Matter of fact, um, I'm gonna turn this off real quick so you can see and verify that I'm gonna lock that door. That door is not opening. <laughs> I do not want the murder hobos coming on board this aircraft. 
Okay, so our next flight, we'll turn on air back on. Our next flight, it looks like we've got to KSEM. That's a size three. This is good. This is really good. Because that means it's going to be slightly bigger and hopefully have more runway. Um, now this place doesn't have an FBO, so I can't load any fuel. I should have looked that up before I came here. But I think I still have plenty of uh, fuel to make the trip. We need a co-pilot. Don't worry, I've got you with me. So, this is on air, and it's really fun. I'm having a lot of fun with this. Um, it's basically a career manager, so I can actually come here and look at my dashboard. This is my company. Um, I don't have a lot of cash yet because I haven't finished this. I've got two more flights to do. Uh, they're going to be super, super short, though. Uh, and after that, I'll get like 800,000 credits, uh, of which I'll get half. Well, I'll probably get 60%, I think. We changed it. So I also help manage a virtual airline, uh, Buona Air. We have opulence. It is an amenity on every flight. <clears throat> I own 1% of the company, but I am also the dispatch manager. Apparently, Salty has $1.7 million of stake, and Bona has $2.58 million. Hopefully, I'll get to that point at some point. By the way, I am totally listening. Alright, so we need to... Where are the next flight? I think we should just about be done. Yes, CD arrived. Okay, we do have uh, we do have an FBO here. I need to find it, but Beef made a snippet of Realms Rambles. Yes, yes. We need this. Okay, so where are we going? KSM. Go on to Simbrief and make a new flight on Simbrief. We're going to go airline A8. Starting from ASC. Arriving. ASM. Alternate is KTL. Airframe is going to be A319-100. Our cargo is going to be... What's our payload? 20,000 pounds? 20,000... 20.5. 20 or, uh... 20.5, but how much is that in... Kilogram... Twenty thousand four one nine five. That's what I. Five eight nine point. Passengers are going to be zero. We have no passengers. I guess I'm like playing. Oh, the latest from Timbrief. <laughs> okay. You. Right. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Let's see. How are we doing here? 
we want zero, zero. We're dropping this off. Um, okay, so Simbrief says we need 4.2 tons. 4.3 tons. Oh, 4 point. So we need full convert. 4.3 Oh, no, wait, four, four kilograms is 1,414 US gap. All right, so here we need 1,414. Close enough. That's not actually having any effect. All right, go fly now. Okay, so it's going to load on some fuel. It's going to take about a half a minute. Switch here. I like pancakes. Speaking of, there are new things to do with those palms um, that you can make me like stretch my legs. We'll get water, in which I'm going to drink some of my water right now. Because my voice is starting to hurt. Um, okay, so where are we? Um, on air says we our fuel loading is finished. We need to load Emma Wilson as our co-pilot. They're going to KSM. I am assuming, right? It is KSM, right? KSM. Okay, so let me turn off on air. And I'm going to start tracking. Wait, first we're going to set up our MCDU. All right, so we're still going to be set up here. We're going to go from... Where the hell are we? SCD... ASM <clears throat> flight number in a zero eight six cost index today is gonna be thirty. Wow, that's different. Are we not allowed? I don't know what we're not allowed to do. Okay, cruise flight level is going to be 100. Climb wind. Turn. All right. So flight plan. We are going to depart. Runway 27. No SID. We're going to arrive at KSM 33. So Yankee, I guess. No star. I guess Novaya. And then in the mean, in the middle, we're gonna go to corner. Clear that. There you go. Good computer. All right, so apparently it's a 40-mile trip. <laughs> Pardon me, 87. 87-mile trip. Uh, Secondary flat plan, I don't need. Initialization B. Go to the Tolis menu. Now I got to do maths. So... Uh, uh, This tells me I need a zero fuel weight of 51.6. 51 51.6. And we need how much fuel? 42.75, so 43.
perfect. But I still needed that window. Come on, rag. You know how to do this. That hasn't been that long. Okay, zero fuel weight. 54.8. 30.3% center of gravity. 4.3. Oh? 51.6. Alright, so 51.6 slash 30.5. Block fuel is 4.3 tons. Performance V1 is 119. The rotate is 127. And V2 is 131. Flaps are going to be 2. Flash down 0.3. <clears throat> 65 degrees flex temp. And a sound. All right. So that's our McDo setup. Really quick. My checklist. Now, let me get, I can see you. Oh, you lovely people. Okay, hydrate. Okay, I will be right back. Let me go grab more water, and I'll just be gone for like two minutes. Ah, but in the meantime, I'm going to run a briefing for you. This is the safety briefing. Greetings from the cockpit. This is your captain speaking. Thank you for choosing to fly a rat pet this evening. I'd like to take this opportunity to remind you. Our AV system isn't working today, so we can't show you the $2 million safety video that an ad agency did for us. But since very little of what that video tells you will actually save your lives, I'm going to do it instead. Here's the big thing to remember. If we crash or make an emergency landing, statistically speaking, 95% of you will survive. If it's a serious crash, 55% of you will survive. So if this plane is going down, concentrate. Because your life may depend on some smart decisions. Keep in mind that 80% of accidents happen within the first three minutes and the last eight minutes of flight. So that's when it would be wise to keep your shoes on and put your laptops away and stay focused. The safest seats on this plane are over the wings closest to the emergency exits. If you're not in one of those right now, here's what you can do to help ensure your survival. Look where your nearest exit is. Now count the rows between you and that exit. If the cabin was full of smoke or upside down, we're full of smoke and upside down. How would you get to that exit? Take a moment to visualize yourself doing that right now. Now look at your seatbelt. I know all of you know how to use it, but that's because nothing is making you lose your shit right now. It's common for people in emergency stress situations to try and open that thing by pressing a button that's not actually there, like seatbelt on your car. Take a moment to imagine yourself lifting that flap in an emergency. In fact, do it right now, just to get used to the motion. Emergency evacuations on the runway are more common than crashes. In the event of something like an engine fire, we need to get you all off the plane in about 90 seconds. This means you need to leave your fucking bags in the overhead bins and get off the damn plane in a quick and orderly manner those bags will bring the evacuation to a virtual halt. My first officer and I will be trying to get off this plane, and the last thing we want is to be cockpit blocked by your roll-off. Now, you're probably well aware there's a life jacket under your seat, but forget about it. They're less likely to save your life than those little airline pillows. Sure, there was a famous 2009 emergency water landing on the Hudson, but there were boats on hand immediately, and nobody actually needed the life jacket. There was a flight that ditched in the Caribbean in 1970 where 40 lives were likely saved by the best. But there was also one off the coast of Ethiopia in 1996 in which many passengers put them on too early and didn't get out of the flooded fuselage. To put it another way, if we replaced those life vests with a box of chocolate, it wouldn't alter your survival lives. Let's take a second to talk about those oxygen. 
Here's the thing. If we lose cabin pressure at a fairly low altitude, no big deal. You can breathe just fine. If we lose cabin pressure at cruising altitude, we can't. If that happens, here's what I'm required to do by law. I'm going to push the nose of the plane into an emergency descent. It's going to feel like a roller coaster drop, and it's going to scare the crap out of you. But it's not dangerous. I practice. Also by law, I need to notify air traffic control as well as the airline. And I need to do all that before I can get on the microphone and tell you what the hell is going on. So don't be surprised if you don't hear from me for a bit. I'm just doing my job. And you're going to be fine. For those of you who don't manage to get your masks on in time, you'll probably pass out and then wake up in a minute or two when they get the plane to a lower altitude. You want to know what the biggest danger is? The biggest danger is actually that your luggage or those big green bottles you purchased in the overhead compartment will fall out when you open it and hit someone on the head. There are actually several thousand reported injuries from this every year in the United States alone. By contrast, the FAA only reports 58 or so serious injuries from turkeys. So one can easily make the case that she should be bringing you a helmet to get the seat Another big risk is drink carton. Seriously. It weighs over 100 kilos and fully loaded, and every year passengers get their elbows, knees, and feet broken when the drink cart slams into them. So keep your arms and legs tucked away. Why have an airline put some safety padding on the drink cart? I don't know. Maybe because you keep screaming at the attendants for your chicken feeding plan, or your drink not being Same goes for spilled fruit, coffee, and teapots, and cups of tea. Every year, some poor passengers get hot coffee or tea in their crotch when there's a bit of turbulence, but until the airlines fix this, I'm afraid to run your own. Now, you're probably wondering how can this bucket of bolts stay in the sky if we can't get the AV system or the latch on your tray didn't work properly. To be honest, we sometimes wonder that as well. But the stats speak for themselves. The actual risk of dying in a plane crash is 1 in 11 million, according to the Harvard School of Public Health 2006 study, so you're far more likely to be struck by lightning or killed by a shark. And it's certainly much safer than driving. Right after 9-11, many were scared to fly. 12 to 20 percent fewer people flew. But because more people made driving trips instead of flying, a German professor estimated that an extra 1,595 people died in car accidents in the year after 9-11, just in the U.S. Just a little reminder that will probably keep your flight will be monitored until you land and shut down the flight. engines because our flight crew doesn't want to be bothered in the galley and they definitely don't like trying to squeeze by you in the aisles. That or I forgot. Neither way. Anyway, please sit back and relax while we take forever to serve you a drink and a barely editable meal and then leave the tray on your table, making it nearly impossible for you to squeeze out of your chair and into a toilet. Looking forward to flying the salty skies with you again. Alright, and we're back, and we're almost set back up. I made a mistake of not starting on air's tracking before I started the engines. Oh well, best I can do. I just shut them back down, started the engines again, uh, or started on air, and then started the engines again. So, squeeze of water enjoyment. I want to make sure everybody knows I've actually gotten the water. All right, so that is the squeeze of water enjoyment of hydration. We've almost got our N1 back up on our first engine. We'll go ahead and turn on our taxi lights. All right, there we go. Now, AP bleed off, master switch off, mission mode to norm. And we can. I'm gonna set this to ten thousand. This to max. Go ahead and taxi to the end of the runway. 
I definitely feel like an A319 should not be here. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that we actually get to take off. I'm not sure what that's doing on my ND. Oh, hello. Oh, it looks like our auto throttle's not going to want to work today. Uh, Tolis. Buddies, what's going on? All right, nose wheel light is taxi, park brake is off, elapsed time run, which I never stopped it. Oh well, brakes check, flight controls, FMA is at nav and climb, auto brake is on max, terrain on ND. First, there's being called Ecam No White, or No Blue, pardon me. Everything looks good. Before takeoff, transponder to TARA, which we never turned off. Cool. Uh, brake temp, 160. Leave the fans on for now. Engine mode as required. Runway turnoff lights on. Landing lights on. Nose light to take off. I don't know, start. Stabilize at 50%. Up to flex. And I'll let go of my parking brake. We gotta get out of here. You want? Rotate. Airborne time locked. Okay, pause the rate gear up. Go ahead and turn on the autopilot. <clears throat> uh, let's turn off our nose wheel light and our runway turnoff lights. Lever to climb. It's still too low for flaps one. Figure up. Ground spoiler is disarmed. Alright, let's go ahead and flaps one. The lights are off. Runway turn off. Lights are off. Autopilot is on. Throttle is in the climb to tent. Flaps are not fully retracted yet. Engine mode is normal. Engine anti-ice is not necessary. And landing lights will be retracted at 10,000 feet, but we're not going to break 10,000 feet, so I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, FCU altimeter set to cruise flight level, which we're already at. Good. Altimeter set standard at 18,000. We're not getting to 18,000, so no big deal. <clears throat> All right, and flap zero, speed checked. We're definitely not far from our arrival. Um, I cannot imagine the world in which this flight goes well. I'm not used to doing such short flights. Um, so this is just going to be me doing the best I can. I've got one more after this. And then that'll be us calling it for the day. Um, so I've got this flight, one more. There'll probably be 15 minutes of flight time each, I think. Um, or at least as close as I can get to that. 
we're probably looking at about 7.45, 8 o'clock, we'll be out of here. Um, I don't want to keep you guys forever, especially not when I know that, you know, maybe this isn't everybody's cup of tea. 115 ounce speed. I'm really getting tired of seeing that because I'm not actually over speeding. My airspeed is 250 indicated. That is my current airspeed. But, uh, and if it's not, then that may be something that we need to talk to Tolis about. Um, but my ground speed is higher, significantly so. Oh, these clouds are so pretty. They are a lot better than they used to be. At least the next one. They're not better than Microsoft's. What is? <clears throat> now I'm thinking this probably doesn't have. Oh, only three three has an ILS. Are we coming in three three? We're not coming in three three, are we? Oh, we're coming in three three. We're gonna have an ILS, folks. I'm happy. We get to fly an ILS. You know, you remember there was a time when I would not fly anything that did not have an ILS. Um, because I needed it to get me lined up. Now, I just, I buttered that last landing. And landed at a runway that was much shorter than it should have been. Uh, I, sh I should not necessarily have been able to stop in that small of a distance. I think the uh, minimum distance is like 6,000, and that was 5,800. Now, it could have been because I have no passengers, I don't have a lot of cargo. No. It could just be that the plane was light and thus easy to slow down. But that's just a guess. I'm not, I'm not sure on that. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and start dialing down our altitude to 2,000. Because uh, that looks like that's just how we're going to do. And normally I think we'd probably expect vectors somewhere in here. To turn around and come in that way. Or maybe not. I mean, it's a small airport. They may just expect you to vector yourself. Um, I'm not sure how they handle that. I've never, I've never really looked at the ATC side of things. They already want me to enter destination data. Okay, cool. I can do that. An ISCS, and we're looking at performance. Approach. We're looking at three zero point one one. Our Q and H. Temperature is going to be 2 1. Wind 0, 050 0 at 3 knots. And then we'll put 200 for our decision height. We'll look to see if we can't grab winds. And. Okay. Progress page. We're only 36 miles away. Um, we'll go ahead and descend here in just a few minutes. Right about now, I'm going to go ahead and start descending. I'm going to let the plane kind of do its own thing there because... Um, we're significantly below the descent profile for where we're going, so it's just going to kind of glide us down nice and gentle. Looks like we need to be at or below 3100, at or below 1800. Turn on our 
landing set. Well, no, we don't need it quite that yet. Uh, descent procedures, landing elevation, auto, arrivals, performance approach, uh, top of descent winds, FCU altimeter, Our altitude has already been set and pushed. <clears throat> Speed brake half is required. Shouldn't be necessary this time, because I'm actually paying attention this time. Uh, the altimeter will be set 3011. Landing lights on. ND data set to constraints. Landing system as required, which we're going to give ourselves a little time before we worry about that necessarily. This thing, it flies so much better than the Asobo A3, A320. I can't. Guys, I need, I need them to understand how bad their, their, their stuff is. I just, I can't, I can't do this. Oh. Okay, so why are we... Seeing this, we having problems with drag. We need. Do we need more drag? Or is it just saying that we're below our descent profile, and that's where it's estimating we're going to re-intercept it? I think that's what it means. It started showing new icons that it wasn't showing before. I think I've got it figured out, yeah. That's just where we're going to re-intercept our uh, descent profile. i go ahead and throw on auto brakes. How long of a runway is it? 8,000 feet. We're fine. Oh, we're fine. Okay. I'm getting anything on this LS, it should not be. Okay, good. We're not. <clears throat> the cool thing is, like, on air actually gives us a lot of information. Like, if you look, and, and I can zoom in. It's showing me the direction to the airport, the orientation of my aircraft, vaguely what my aircraft is. Um, at least it's classification. Um, where I'm going, I can zoom in really far. I can even see the topography. This is really cool. On Air did really, really well with it. Also, what did you guys think of that uh, safety briefing? I, I probably spent three hours on that, honestly. I had to re-record so many parts because I flubbed up the, the words. I just stuttered or something, and I wanted to make one really nice, clean file because it's pre-recorded. There's no reason why I can't get it right. I think that, that would be pretty bad. Um... How long of a final is that? I, f I feel like... You know what? I feel like we need to vector ourselves, and I feel like we're gonna...
I think about 150. And then when I've got... <clears throat> what is that? Uh, 240? When I've got 240 to uh, Cadip, then I'll direct it. I, I, I don't want to get this big swing because I feel like that's not going to give me enough of a final. I really want to aim for like a 10 mile final. And I feel like that's more of a 5 mile, maybe 7 mile. <clears throat> I don't have charts in front of me today. I didn't figure I would need it for something like this. As as you know, casually as I've been flying this in Microsoft Flight Simulator because the charts won't work there, I didn't want to, you know, mess anything up trying to get too specific here. The whole point is to have fun, right? Like, that's the point for me, that's the point for you guys. I just want everyone to have fun. Um, so, if you guys want to do something like this, program is called on air which I'm actually gonna hide from thing I keep forgetting that I've, I'm leaving it up uh, the program is called on air and you can absolutely play it without a uh, you can definitely play it without anything no no simulator no nothing that's not an issue you'll be limited to I think only cumulus has AI pilots um, or it might be cumulus and Stratus Thunder, where you can make VAs and work together with other people as something other than partners, that's a little different. Uh, you, you have to actually have a simulator to play on, uh, on Thunder. I'm going to watch this real quick. I'm going to be on the direct two. Hit cat it. I'm gonna hold on to it until you hit two four zero. No. Actually I wanna hit it at two three zero. Go ahead and hit it now. Close up. <clears throat> just because I didn't want to have the big hook around I wanted to go more direct but it's really cool especially if you like flying GA it gives you a really good reason to fly GA and visit a lot of small airports that you may have never been to before <clears throat> to really explore the all of the regions that Microsoft Flight has to offer. Um, so if you guys want to try it out, it is so easy. Just go to onair.company, start a seven-day free trial, then you can jump to uh, search for Microsoft Xbox uh, Game Pass PC. Make sure you get the PC version. If you've never gotten it before, it will be $1 for your first month and $5 for every month. After that, you will get the base version of Microsoft Flight for free with that purchase. So instead of paying $60, $90, or as I did, $120, get access to everything in Microsoft Flight. Uh, you'll pay $1 and you'll get a month to try it out see if it's for you. You'll get a week with On Air. And even after that, prices on On Air are ridiculously affordable. For how much fun I have had with it, man, there's no there's no comparison. Okay, we're gonna have to send a little faster. Uh, we need to expedite our descent.
speed is in managed mode, speed brake as required, we're throwing it out right now. Flaps at 230 knots, uh, which I'm hoping it catches soon. Also hoping that we are going to catch up to that up to the descent, wide slope. And flaps one. Don't see our runway yet. That's not good. Two thousand. Go on approach mode. Okay, glide slope is captured. That's where we're landing, right there. Cool. All right, you're down. We check flaps two. Control my airplane. Vacate right because I don't see a taxi line going there. And why is there a taxi line? Oh, no, wait, okay, that's runway warning. Okay. Alright, let's figure out where the hell we're going. Uh, that's in toolkit. Look at my. Oh! What's going on with this taxiway? Body.
All right, so here we are right at the apron. Apparently there's like nowhere to go, so this is it. I'm gonna kind of swing out this way. Turn around, oh down. Break out my passengers. Not that I have any passengers. We're carrying cargo today. Remember, Sean? All right. So we're going to turn off all of these lights. We're going to clean up a little bit. Loud. Landing lights retracted, ground spoilers disarmed, engine mode normal, flaps retracted, APU master on. This is actually the important part that I keep forgetting. Rain on Indy is off, brake fan on is definitely required and it's still going. <clears throat> Look at our wheels. Oh, they're not too bad. Okay. So then we're going to, once we have our flap open message, start the APU. It takes just a couple minutes here to get shut down. Stretch. It doesn't have to be a get up and stretch. Just stretch my chair. No, no, no. It needs to be a get up and stretch, which I'm going to do right now. Sorry, I didn't want to do that while I was on approach. I don't know how long ago that came in. Okay. And it's going to take that APU a little time to start up anyway. There we go. All right, and it looks like our APU is started. I'm gonna start up the bleed. Pardon me. Breaking brake on, APU bleed on, engine one and two master off. Engine off time locked. End of flight, registered in on-air company. Okay, beautiful. Now, we need to plan another one. We got dinged again for more than 250 knots under flight level 100, which we did not actually do. Lights were on it, engines shut down except for beacon and strobe. Now, that's a glitch that they're having right now. They are aware of it. It sucks, but oh well. I still gained 0.04% reputation. All right, and now we're going to do one more flight. Hopefully a relatively short one. Let's see, where are we going? Just came in. Perfect. Okay, so I didn't me mess that up and, and wait too long. Cool. And if let me know if these if that sort of stuff is things that you guys want, that you guys enjoy. I think it helps me as a streamer to take care of myself. <laughs> um, I really appreciate you guys uh, taking part in that. I don't know if it means anything to you guys, but it definitely does help. Uh, so where are we going now? We're going to the tour. Oh, uh, co-pilot is Billy Wilson. Looks like we don't have an FBO here, which um, weird. Okay. Hopefully, we still have enough fuel to make that trip, which I'm sure we do. All right, so let's go to uh, Simbrief. Make a new flight. A zero eight seven, starting from Kaysim. We're going to Cape Boy. Kaysim to Kato. And the airframe is going to be the A319. Uh, our cargo is going to be. Let me throw up on air for you guys. 
our cargo is going to be 11,850. That's 5,376 kilograms. 5.4 kilograms. Four. Passenger zero, stop changing it to auto, please. Thank you very much. And then we are going to generate the OFP. At that point, I can go to get flight fleet flight planning latest data checklists about do have a checklist for the A319 if you are interested in it feel free to pester me for it don't think you're pestering but um, I'm gonna call it that anyway just because I'm at right, so load latest from Simbrief are we coming in approach percent Um, okay, there we go. Starting. Okay. I'm going to fly that now. Um, let's make sure that this is properly configured so we're going to the ISCS screen um, we need three eight nine five one thousand two hundred eighty three west gallon how much do I have Seventy-eight. That's not gonna be enough. It's gonna be enough to make the flight. It's not enough for my. Um, what it's not is enough for my alternate. It will be fine. Um, what? Are you mad about? Brakes hot. Yeah, I know. Why the blower's on? Just relax a little bit, huh? I got you. Don't you worry. All right, um, kilograms, a little short. You know what, it's just going to be whatever we've got. This should set it up properly. Recall is not mar is not modeled in the uh, Tolis. That's interesting. All right, so we should be able to just uh, engine mode to ignition, start engine two. And then we're gonna wait for uh, twenty percent in two rotation or in one rotation. Pardon me. Move this. Your flight will be monitored until Gotta you run. Oh, and shut I'm sorry. down the engine. Gotta go. Take care. Love you, and I will see you tomorrow, hopefully. <clears throat> okay, so we are going to uh, knit. We're going from KSM to play. Five zero eight seven. Cost index A is thirty six. Use flight level. We've got twenty percent in one rotation. So we'll start engine two. Um, <clears throat> cruise flight level today is gonna be one ten. Hmm.
11,000 feet. It's going to go up to 11,000. So from KSM, we're not going to have really much of a departure. We are going to leave by, oops, by plan. And we're going to arrive KTOY, uh, ILS, actually we're going to do RNAV 7. Star, Odia. Transition. Cool. And then uh, in the middle, we're going to have M. Mike Golf. Dirt. And insert. Yay. And it B. Doesn't want to let me do a nitby. Oh boy! All right, so V1 is going to be one three seven. Rotate is going to be one three eight. Two is going to be one four one. Actually, I may want to check this. So, have a zero fuel weight, forty seven point seven. Which I definitely do not have. 47.7. By these low. Okay, so this is going to change. 124. 124. We can use the whole runway. That hasn't happened in a hot minute. 127. Flaps are going to be 2. Down. 0.3. And our flex temp is going to be 66 degrees. And we are heading to... So... Alright, so engines both started. Uh, nose wheel light to taxi, park brake off, elapsed time run. Set parking, br uh, auto brake to max. So we need a way to get onto runway. Break set max. Bring on in deep. Ecam. Config test. No blue. Transponder should still be in TARA. I never did turn that off. Brake temps are good enough. Uh, engine mode as required. We turn offs. Everything up to takeoff configuration. Might go ahead and do a rolling start here.
percent. Ableize. Like set. That's in one. You want rotate. Positive rate, gear up. Go ahead and set that autopilot. And we turn offs off, nose light off, speed brake disarmed. Right, and speed check flaps one. Engine mode is normal, engine anti ice is not required. Landing lights will go off. I'm not going to bother turning them off. There's no point at which it's actually going to matter. E checked. Flaps zero. Push this back so I can actually see you guys. Thank you guys so much for being here today. I really do appreciate you guys showing support and the love. Um, I want to know how you guys are doing. So if you feel comfortable, you don't have to, but if you feel comfortable about it, tell me what you've been doing. Tell me how you're living your best life. Um, I know that things are difficult right now. Um, you know, there's obvious things getting in the way for all of us. But that's not the end all be all of everything, right? So if you're comfortable with it, let me know in chat. What are you doing? What are you passionate about? Like, I know Cammie is getting her master's. That's fantastic. I'm doing this. You know, I'm trying to trying to get you guys interested, trying to, to pull some uh, pull some people in and, and bring people into the family, you know? Because that's what I feel like. I feel like you guys are family. Right? And we take care of each other. That's what we do. And hopefully... You guys enjoy it too. Like, uh, I'm gonna take on air off because I've had that up the entire time and I'm not paying attention um, because I'm too worried about flying the aircraft properly. Looks like we're already almost up to climb, but uh, we're gonna have to descend just as quick. <laughs> oh. Stop with that warning. I am under 250 knots. Shh. Now, the Tolis follows these lines a lot better than the Asobo does. Um, I'm not going to say we don't talk about Microsoft Flight, because Microsoft Flight is not bad. Like, do not misconstrue what I'm saying. Microsoft Flight is fantastic. It's just fantastic for what it is. And what is it? It's a sandbox. It's VFR. It's GA. It's exactly what it says it is on the box and not a whit more. It will be. It is a great starting place. I will give it that. It is a great starting place. Um, also hot takes uh, I, I'm sure some of you guys have noticed the title of the stream uh, <laughs> the reason why I don't know who decided to muck around with automatic tags for the X-Plane directory but for some reason they decided to throw in RTS strategy, education they threw in a bunch of shit and they took out the things that are actually relevant like Flight simulation. 
you know, the thing that it is. Um, they took out Sandbox. They took out Open World. I can't put any of those things in now either. It's like those tags are completely gone. Um, and maybe that's what they did, but that means that they've got no tags to cover this particular genre. And so if you guys can help me out by just yelling at, at Twitch and telling them that they fucked up, then I, I would greatly appreciate that. Because um, I am a lowly affiliate and they don't listen to me, even though I'm streaming in this every week and have been doing for years. Um, they just, oh, I don't know what they were thinking. I don't know what they were doing. It, it's stupid. Um, there doesn't seem to be anything to cover this game anymore. Go ahead and pre-plan to come down to 2000. They don't know where the actual intercept for the ILS here is. But we are planning for an ILS. We should have plenty of fuel. We're fine. We're also only... We're already needing to enter our destination data. So, Tolis, yes, yes. Back. All right, Q&H is going to be 3012. Temperature is 22. Winds are 050F. Four. If we can pull top of the winds. And perfect. And we are 36 miles to K Toy. Go ahead and start descending. Our brakes doing our wheels 270. What? I'm gonna go ahead and drop my wheels. I'm not above. I am. I am above. I need to be at 280 knots. <clears throat> Which is good, because it's going to bring me down below 280 knots now. Then I'm going to get all that air rushing by. And that's going to help to uh, cool down my brakes, because they are hacking hot. Nuts, so let's go ahead and drop them. Airplane, are you a new thing? There we go. That's gotten it down. Now let's let's watch these drop a little bit. So I wanna zoom out a little bit, see where we're at. Okay. Turn on our LS just in case. Let's go ahead and get our descent procedures. Landing elevation is auto. Arrival, performance approach. 
Top descent winds, all taken care of. Altitude set and push. Uh, speed brake half as required. Shouldn't need that today. Uh, altimeter set QNH 3012. Landing lights are still on. ND data is still on constraints and airports. Uh, landing system is on. Rad nav. Don't have to worry about it. Approach. FCU speed is in managed mode. Speed brakes shouldn't be required. Flaps 1 will be at 230 knots. <clears throat> We've got probably 30 miles or so before we uh, land. These little tiny hops are really testing my abilities to handle this aircraft. And I like that. I really do. Uh, I'm not used to such short flights. I'm used to much, much longer flights. I'm used to one and a half to two hour flights, sometimes even up to three hours. But this has just been really fun. It's been really fun. Especially being able to practice these landings on really short run things. Oh good, look at those wheels. Oh, that brake. Those brakes are uh, pulling down nicely. We're wasting a little fuel, but we've got plenty of fuel. We'll be fine. This is going to be our last landing for the night. We've been going for about three hours already. Uh, we'll probably be in 810. Central Standard Time. <clears throat> and then I will be back tomorrow doing uh, Mega Man X2 and probably X3. I can't imagine the world in which two hours is not enough time for me to play X2 with only two Mavericks and Sigma Stages. But I probably won't get far into X3, and then I'll have to look at X4, which will be my first time ever playing X3. That'll be Friday. So tomorrow I stream at the same time I did today, 5 p.m. to at least 7. Uh, assuming that I don't shred my voice. And then uh, Friday I stream from 2 central to 4. Alright, so we are lining up with that ILS. <clears throat> Pardon me. Go ahead and hit that approach button. Turn off the brake fans because we're nice and cool now. Checked, flaps one. Right, and DFE next. To be checked, flaps two. Be 
checked, flaps three. And speed checked, flaps four. I probably could have waited until we were a little closer. Um, yeah, it looks like we're about 11 mile final. Can't even see it through the haze. X-Plane, we need to have a talk. As much as I love X-Plane, y'all need to realize that uh, just because the METAR says 10 statute miles doesn't mean that you can only see 10 statute miles. 10 statute miles is also how we say in the United States, unlimited visibility. Oh shit, I've had my APU on the entire way. I have wasted so much fuel. Ah, I, I should not have done that, but I did and I feel bad. Oh, I'm a terrible pilot. Alright, capture that guy. Glide slope. Glide slope. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. Come on. Down. 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 Or are you going to let it go? Okay. I'm going to stop it there. Start descending a little faster. Try coming left. They'll can't see the airport. Two thousand. There we are. I see the airport. I think I do. Right here. Yeah, that's it. That's the ticket. ILS seems off to the left. One thousand. I definitely feel like this, this ILS is off to the left. One hundred. 
50, 40, 30, 20, retard, retard, 10, 5. Landing time locked. Landed at Kilo Tango, Oscar, India. And cutter! Nice! Okay, I am very proud of myself for that one. to go ahead and taxi to the end of the runway or closer to you. look at sim brief it doesn't want to give him taxiways <laughs> Oh well. Uh, this looks like a taxiway here, I guess. Nope. Oh, wait, wait. Yes, it is. It's exactly what that is. So it's time for us to get paid. I have no idea where I am. Again, SimBrief won't, or not SimBrief, uh, Team Toolkit Pro won't show me the uh, runways or anything, or the taxiways. All right, so we're gonna start that uh, uh, rollouts, landing lights off. All right, and then brake fans on. <laughs> Clean up our flaps. Retract our spoilers. Uh, start our APU. Rain in the off. Parking brake on. Uh, Anti-ice off. AP bleed comes on as soon as the APU is available. I'll go ahead and flip this back so I can see you guys. I want to thank you guys once again for being here. Uh, I really appreciate the time that, and energy that you have put into being here on the stream with me. Um, I know that it can be uh, exhausting <laughs> to uh, show up every time. And I just want to let you guys know that I notice it and I appreciate it. And I thank you so, so much. Uh, okay, so APU is available. APU bleed on. Engine 1 and 2 master off. Engine off time logged. End of flight. Registered right, in on-air company. let's show you this. Uh, so this is where we get paid. Um... Once again, got a 0.04% reputation change in the positive direction. Uh, we didn't get a percentage thing for that, but uh, lights were on and engines shut down. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's fair. Didn't go through my full shutdown. Oh, well. Uh, but the aircraft handling and comfort bonus we did get. Look at what we got there. You should be able to see when I come back, I'll have like 600,000 credits here. Yeah, 692.2 thousand. And if I switch here to manage the VA, uh, I can show you where, and this I can only do because I'm a man. I'm gonna go in and look at our cash flow statement. And you'll see Delivered cargoes, 506000 for me, 843000 that came into the VA for it. Uh, they did have to pay a rental fee for me of $32,000 for the half hour. So $32,000, $32,147,000, they're out all of this money for me. 
which is not terrible. I mean, it wound up costing them what about four hundred thousand? No, wait. Uh, sorry, six point nine. So two hundred thousand. Cost about two hundred thousand. Um. <clears throat> Actually, some of this isn't even for me. <laughs> All right. A lot of this isn't even for me. Okay. So, how much was my... Uh, no, wait. Oh, that's bad. I don't know where it was. Anyway, that's, that's what it looks like um, for the VA. VA is making some bank. And they're going to continue making bank, especially off of me, because I'm going to make sure that <laughs> I'm doing it to the best of my abilities. All right, so I'm going to close that down, turn it off. All right, thank you guys so much for being here, and I will see you tomorrow. Let's find somebody to raid. Um, Twitch. That's... No, that's not X. Alright, well, I don't see anybody else on in... in buddy. Ooh, Buana is playing DCS World, so guess what we're going to do? We are going to raid... so much for being here and i will see you tomorrow have a fantastic evening i love you good night